Okay, so I feel like as someone who preaches about the integrity and craft of this channel, and seeing how I wasn't around sounding like a bird and giving mid-tier reviews on YouTube when Sony gave an answer to a question that no one was asking for when they decided to randomly, well, not so randomly, decided to follow in the footsteps of what they would more than likely consider superior studios, and started rebooting and rehauling each and every single IP their little kitten mittens could get their hands on. And obviously, the Ghostbusters franchise was no exception. And don't get me wrong, while I'm not here to talk about Ghostbusters Afterlife, the attempted reboot- <laughs> No, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 not, not that one. Actually, hold up, wait. I think there's something in the fine print. Now that right there is actually pretty interesting, but I do want to mention that I have this genuine philosophy when it comes to movies or say in this instance, when studios decide to take a leap, no matter how grand or minuscule it is, and start a new trilogy. A standard that has very low key, seemingly become an unwritten rule in Hollywood now in order to be considered a successful franchise. Except for James Cameron, that man is out of control with those Smurf movies. My philosophy and point is, is that I don't really blame the first movie at the beginning of a trilogy for say being bland or vanilla or safe, pretty normal and I would say a frequently occurring theme on my channel when it comes to the majority of Hollywood's most recent releases in the past half decade, but not at the start of a new trilogy. I didn't do it with The Force Awakens for pretty much just being a new hope. I didn't do it with the first Jurassic World movie for pretty much just being a more grandiose Jurassic Park, and most recently, I didn't blame the Kung Fu Panda 4 movie for the new direction they want to take the franchise. What's more important to me specifically is what you do with your next set of cards. What you do when you get that perfect pitch. The actual vision you want to display to your audience. And that usually comes in the second film of this, say, hypothetical trilogy. And unfortunately, when it comes to the sequel film in this hypothetical trilogy in Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, it's been a long time since I've seen a vision this mid. I mean, this is Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom's level of mid. This is a mid on mid fight to the death. But to be serious, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire is the epitome of a movie that has a solid foundation, but built with such a weak structure and obviously unconfident employees, relying on the old to get it right, nostalgia to get it made, and the charm of the office idiot to get butts in seats. And while yes, there is seemingly a diamond in the rough trying to claim her way to fame while turning in an actual great performance and honing in on her craft, with incompetent management, improper planning, lack of guidance, and a half-assed vision, a lower level employee can only climb so far, and the consumer base can only be asked to endure so much when it comes to a franchise that doesn't really have much to offer. And while I don't want to say I had high expectations or anything when it came to this second film and what will definitely be a new Ghostbusters trilogy, I mean, I did expect a little bit more effort than this. But that's enough yapping for now. Let's talk. Oh, yeah, I don't know if I happened to mention in that rant that this movie's pacing is absolute dog poo. Therefore, the plot of this movie was affected by that stench. And because of that, we're just going to go off what the movie self-describes as. Seems easy enough for me. So we're still following in the Spangler family as they return to the iconic New York City firehouse where the original Ghostbusters have taken ghostbusting to a whole new level. When the discovery of an ancient artifact unleashes the evil force, the Ghostbusters of old and new must unite to protect their home and save the world from a second ice age. What? Uh, yeah, don't get me wrong. I know I added a couple words there, but I don't know what type of movie they watched or what type of movie they're describing because that movie actually sounds like it could be pretty awesome. Even the trailers were pretty awesome. And I guess for about 15 minutes of this almost two hour snooze fest, that was almost the case. But unfortunately, that plot summary did not play out on our screens. Ghostbusters Frozen Empire is more of a comedic character journey of Phoebe mixed in with Actually, no, not even just mixed in. The rest of the ingredients are just either one-off MCU Phase 4 Marvel quips or a nostalgia bait to the highest degree. It was pretty shameful, but we did have our moments. 
McKenna Grace as Phoebe is yet again a standout, continuing to be the best new character addition to this franchise. She's definitely more of the front man in this movie, and while that was definitely appreciated from a casual fan's point of view such as myself, the lack of support when it comes from the writing department really destroy any momentum she picks up throughout the entirety of the movie. And honestly, it's really unfortunate because hopefully she just doesn't get typecast as like this nerdy, quirky girl in Hollywood because with some real talent behind the camera and actual brain cells in the writing room, I think she could honestly have a semi-flourishing career. But time is on her side, so I'm sure she'll be fine. Paul Rudd is still just as charming and charismatic as ever. I mean, he's just playing himself, but he has to be studied at some university of just how good he is at just knowing the job. He knows his role, and he plays it to near perfection almost every single time. Bravo, I guess. And I can't say if you're an old head, you'll enjoy yourself for sure. I had this old homie probably three seats to the left of me, clapping it up at pretty much every opportunity he got when it came to the old heads doing old head shenanigans. And I'm not gonna lie, that was pretty fun. But do you want to know what wasn't fun or even semi-enjoyable? It was the first half of this movie. I kid you not, the first two acts of this movie almost put me to sleep. No joke. And it goes back to the fact of how terrible the pacing was. And again, it's just unfortunate because we did have a pretty solid puzzle going on here, but the pieces were just mashed together with no patience and lack of IQ to where just one missing piece can destroy the puzzle altogether. And let me make myself clear right now. Kamal Nanjani and Mike from Stranger Things were pretty much completely different pieces from a completely different puzzle. Completely unnecessary to this movie and just completely annoying characters. So, excluding the clown activity that Nanjani was on, I feel as if if there was just a little bit more time in the lab in the writing department, we could have actually had something going on here. But I guess that still doesn't really help the fact that the lack of villains, or villain, and to put it frank, the lack of ghost busting was where the real issues lie. I mean, the golden ball that our villain was entombed in, I'm pretty sure had more screen time than our actual villain. Like, whose decision was that? Overall, there's kind of no way that I could really recommend Ghostbusters Frozen Empire at the price tag that it comes with. A movie that was riddled with tonal changes, plagued by poor pacing, and unfortunately, just a movie that simply had no confidence or what might be even worse, competence, to execute their vision. So in a ranking system, or I guess you can say a new grading system, that is relatively new, or let me not even say relatively new, this is a new grading tier list being added to the end of every one of my videos, or I guess I should say every one of my reviews on my channel. I started last week with my Kung Fu Panda 4 review. I would say go watch that, but you're just going to see where I ranked it here, so... I don't know, you still could just go do your boy a solid. Nevertheless, I think I can comfortably say that Ghostbusters Frozen Empire is mid. Unlucky, I guess. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I should say go follow me on Twitter. I started a whole new account for this channel, so I'm going to start promoting that more. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you did enjoy, why not click on more while you're at it? Otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.